God is good. Let's have a word of prayer before we get into the word of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your love, your joy, your peace. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you for watching over as we sleep and as we slumber. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for everything, Lord. We can't thank you enough. We want you to know that we realize that it is you. And so we just give you all the praise and glory. We ask that your Holy Spirit will break down your word so we can apply what we learn to our Christian walk and so that we can grow in Christ. In Jesus' name, we all say it together. Amen. 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 Thank you all for being here this morning. I'm Pastor Jim being the third. All we start off with looking at our Bible chart towards the back here. Uh, it is a tool that we use to do what the word says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. If you don't mind turning there real quick, we'll go over the chart very briefly. And then there's a special topic that I want to preach about today. We'll take a five minute break and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll take a quiz on Romans chapter 6 before we get into Romans chapter 7. And so God is good. So when you look at the Bible, it's a huge book, 66 books. And so when the scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, and the first word of that scripture is study. study. So as you're studying the Bible, you will see a lot of differences. You will see some things that are similar and you will see some things that it may seem like it's contradicting. When you understand that we are to rightly divide the scripture, the confusion goes out the window. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There are three major divisions in the Bible. Jesus Christ gave Paul that scripture in 2 Timothy 2.15. It's only right in my viewpoint that Jesus Christ gave Paul the, give us the directions on how to do it. Paul talks about time past. That is out, right out of the Bible. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. There is a time past system. And in your Bible, from Genesis to the book of Acts, it was a system. It was a administration it was a dispensation called time pass and when Paul uses that term he's referring to this part of the Bible Genesis to the about Acts this time of the Bible there was a difference between the Jews the nation of Israel God's chosen people and the Gentiles the Bible calls the Gentiles dogs the Bible calls the Gentile uh, heathen and pagan and so there was a difference. There was a difference. But when you study God's word, you see that at the cross, God had everyone in mind all along. But there was a middle wall of partition that was put up by God. God gave one religion to humanity, only one. It was the law. It was the, the Ten Commandments. He gave the law of Moses. It was called the law of Moses. He gave it to Moses. Moses gave it to the nation of Israel. And when he gave them that law, Israel had an advantage. They had the word of God. They had the oracles of God. They seen God's signs and wonders, the deliverance out of Egypt. We know the story. And then through that line of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you, you come across Moses and then David and then John the Baptist. And then at the appointed time, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God sent prophets before, but at this time he sent his only begotten son. This was still in a time past system. The word says that Jesus was Christ. Jesus Christ, he was born under the law. He was he's obviously the king of kings and the Lord of lords. That's why he kept continuing to say the kingdom of God is at hand. The king was right there on the earth. And if you look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Matthew, they were supposed to recognize him as king. Mark, you know, they were supposed to really see that he was a servant. They were supposed to see in Luke that he was a, a man, 100% man, 100% God. And then John, he was, he was God in the flesh. The word became flesh, amen? And then we get to the cross. This particular event changed history. Everything that the law pointed to, all the animal sacrifices, it all pointed to what the Lord Jesus Christ 
would accomplish on the cross. Even Abraham, we know the story of Abraham, he was going to sacrifice his what? His son. That was a shadow and a type of what God would go through with completely. God will follow through. God would sacrifice his own son. And at the cross, Jesus Christ's death, burial, and his resurrection, that, was, that cross was seen as a bad thing. It was bad news. That's where criminals went to die in Rome. But God did something. He used that cross to back all of the sins from the past, the forbearance, and also the sins in future. This timeline, it is future based. The timeline goes that way, starting the book of Genesis. And it goes and it goes and it goes. By the time you get to the book of Acts, that's a transitional book. You have the fall and the diminishing of the nation of Israel. A lot of pastors will not preach and teach that, but it's in the Bible, Romans chapter 11. We will get there eventually. And today as we speak, both the nation of Israel and Gentiles, both today in this particular dispensation are on the low level. We are all on the same level. We all look to the cross for redemption. This part of the Bible, Paul calls it, but now. He explains it in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. This is the dispensation of grace. Paul talks about the body of Christ. That is something that God is doing today. God is building, he's adding to, he's forming the body of Christ for the last 2,000 years. If you are saved, you are a part of this body. This body of Christ will be resurrected one day, what we call the rapture, will be taken out of this world. Paul also calls it the mystery. This is the mystery because in the Bible, the majority of the Bible is prophecy. Prophecy. Here it was the prophets, they prophesied what was going to happen, and it will happen in that kingdom. God will keep every single promise He made to the nation of Israel. That the covenant, the, the promise of the nation and the land, Israel will get everything that they were, they were promised in that kingdom. But God did something that was a secret. If the devil would have known that if after Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried and rose again, that God will now save sinners. Sinners can be justified. Sinners can be reconciled by, by God because of Jesus Christ. They would have never crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, you and I, we live in one of the most blessed times in human history after the cross where we can be saved by the grace of God. It's an amazing grace. It tells us in Ephesians, we're saved by grace through faith plus nothing. It is a gift of God. We're going to be celebrating what we call, what is known as Christmas. But the key thing about it is we are celebrating the gift. Jesus Christ is the gift. I know the, the wise men, they brought gifts to Jesus, but he is the gift from who? From God. From God. The gift is that he can save us from our sins. Romans through Philemon, that's where you find all of this information. Here at Valor Ministries, we are getting every single word. Every single word that God is going to hold us accountable for. Romans chapter 2 verse 16. We're started in Romans and we're, we're making our way through Philemon. Feel free, study ahead of us. Read before any questions, comments, call me, text me, email me. This is major. We want to major on the but now. These 13 books, Romans through Philemon. The whole Bible is for us. But what Paul wrote is to us and about us as the body of Christ. You ask yourself, what is God doing today? You can find it right here, Romans through Philemon. Some of the things that God did in the past, he's not doing those things anymore. Some of the things he will do in the future, that will be in the future. But today, if you really want to understand the gospel of grace, if you really want to understand the gospel of the uncircumcision, a salvation that is to all and upon all that what? Believe. It's no longer restricted to the nation of Israel. And then Paul talks about the next 
uh, uh, division is it's ages to come. Just look at that. Time passed, passed. But now, what's going on currently? And then ages to come. What will happen in the future? There's a lot of things God wants us to know. And that's why that first word of 2 Timothy 2.15, and the word is study, right? Study. In order to study, it takes time. To study, it takes sacrifice. Am I right or wrong? And I know we're busy. We got a lot going on. But who wants to be on the same page with God? Amen. His word will help us, gives us the instructions The three D's, the doctrine for today, our duty and our final destination. After the rapture, we go to heavenly places. At the judgment seat of Christ, those who build upon Paul's foundation, you'll find in these 13 books, you get the reward that God intended for you to have. If you did not build upon Paul's foundation, if you did not rightly divide the word of truth, if you're preaching a different gospel, the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of the circumcision, you're not preaching the gospel of the uncircumcision or the gospel of grace, that's burnt up at the judgment seat of Christ. Good intentions are burnt up. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 through 15 makes it very clear that a, most Christ, a lot of Christians, they will, what the Bible says, suffer loss. That ministry, all the things that was passed on to them, the traditions of religion, it's going to get burnt up. What abides that fire at the judgment seat? It's it's very clear. It's the clearest thing I can see. Paul says, I am as a wise master builder. He says, build upon the foundation. This foundation that Jesus gave me, build upon it. He says, take heed how you build on there. Because if you don't build the way that Jesus Christ gave it to Paul for today, it's going to get burnt up. You don't get the reward. You get to go to heaven. That's good. But who wants that reward in heaven? I want the reward. I want the reward. I want everything that God intended for me to have. And then when the rapture happens, that start the scariest time in humanity. Can y'all see the chart over there? Can you see it? That Antichrist, we studied about him about a, a month ago, that seven year tribulation period. The prayer for those people who are Alive at that time. See, when a rapture happens, there might be babies who were just born that day. There might be some person in the, in the world who never heard the gospel of grace. Well, that, this disp- dispensation will end, but now we'll be back to the gospel of the kingdom. And so if they can make it through, if they can hear the gospel, if they can make it through, the prayer is thy kingdom come. And after that seven years, The Lord Jesus Christ will come back and establish his kingdom. The 12 tribes will be up there, the the nation of Israel, and they will truly be that glorious nation. All the promises and everything, everything will come to fruition in that kingdom. God gives them a new, uh, uh, how did he say it? He he, He takes away sin and iniquity from them. They can no longer sin. He writes their, his laws in their heart and in their mind. It talks about that in Jeremiah. And they are the agency upon the earth, the body of Christ. We are in the heavenly places reigning with, 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 with God. Thousand years, Satan is in the, the bottomless pit. A seal is put upon his mouth, Revelation chapter 20. He can no longer deceive anyone. The knowledge of God is preached all over the world righteousness see in this kingdom righteousness rules even Jesus Christ reigns with the iron rod you talk about who would like to see some righteousness today or in this time period we see a lot of people getting away with a lot of stuff right and we say to ourselves that ain't right reading the headlines that ain't right that ain't right there will come a time in this kingdom where the, 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 the punishment will be swift and they will be throwing people in hell right away. It will be no joke. 
No more Mr. Nice Guy as Christ reigns on this earth. Even the lion or the wolf and the lamb, you know, they, they're always trying to eat, you know, the lion and the wolf, they want to eat that lamb, right? They won't even be eating each other. Lion will be eating hay. Righteousness. Read about in Isaiah. Righteousness. Oh, man, that's going to be something to see. No more faith. Jesus Christ is right there on the throne in life and in person. And we'll be in heaven. The heavenly place is reigning in the heavenly places. After a thousand years, Satan is released. He deceives the nations. That's what he's good at. They come to make war against God. And at that great white throne, if you read about it, everyone standing at that great white throne, remember, they were released out of hell. They were from the sea. They were dead. Everyone standing there, it's like a day in court where they try to explain why they rejected the gospel. Why they rejected what Jesus Christ did. Many atheists didn't believe. They're going to see him right there. And he's going to say, why didn't you believe on me? All that sin, I took care of it for you, but you didn't even believe on me. You're going to have to go pay for your own sins. A place called hell. That's the Bible, rightly dividing, knowing where everything fits. Today, I want to talk about something that happened. Let me start my timer. I want to talk about something that happened in the beginning. Can somebody say in the beginning? So on our chart, we look here. What, what names do you see here? Adam. What book do we read about Adam at in? Genesis. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 3. And check this out. I'll, I'll stop. We'll have some questions, Q&A on this. But I just want to share with you some things that I thought was very interesting. I want to share with you what took place in this garden. Eve was deceived and Adam disobeyed. What did the devil throw at them? And if we can recognize it in the word of God, maybe we can recognize it in today's society and what's going on in our life. Amen? Would that be beneficial? I want to talk about the five steps of peccability. Now that word peccability, <laughs> I had to look it up. Peccable is defined as liable to sin, subject to transgress the divine law. How did the devil get Adam and Eve to sin to rebel against God for the very first time, amen? You and I, we live in this time, sin is already, we, you know, we just, it's passed on. We, we learn how to sin, it's easy. It's, everybody's doing it, right? <laughs> but for Adam and Eve, it was the first time they were made perfect. They were made in the image of God. What did the devil do? What did he say? What was his strategy? How did he get them to sin when they were in paradise? There's five steps and we'll take a look at that. The five steps are, he gave them a presentation. And in that presentation, he illuminated some things and he made it seem like, hey, if you do this, it will be an advancement. He also got them to debate or to entertain thoughts that was contrary to what God said. And then during that thought process, they made a decision. Eve made a decision. And then once it's in your mind and once it's in your heart, you're going to do it. Let's look at it. If, uh, Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 says, now the who? The serpent was more subtle, subtle, subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. What does that word subtle mean? Am I, am I saying it right? Subtle? What does that mean? Cunning, deceiving, craftiness, or like we say in the hood, he was slick. <laughs> yeah, he was slick. He was smooth. Anybody come across somebody who was just slick? Yeah. 
he was subtle. And he said unto the woman, yay, have God said ye should not eat of every tree of the garden? Now notice verse one, he's called a serpent. He's also called a what? A beast. I got some pictures up here. Based on Ezekiel, let's turn to Ezekiel. I'm just sharing you some, I'm trying to connect the dots, what she was dealing with and what appeared to be what the Bible calls a, a cherub. Uh, uh, it's more than an angel, it's a higher rank of an angel. Let's go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter one. So this cherub, am I saying that right? Is it cherub or sheriff? How do y'all you, you pronounce it? Cherub. Say it. Cherub. cherub. This cherub had authority in heaven. So in my viewpoint, I think she believed that, oh, it's, this is the cherub. This is the one that God made with rank. He's not going to deceive me. But was she wrong? Go to, let's go to Ezekiel. I got this new big Bible and it's, it's so different from my smaller Bible. It takes me a longer time to, to find it. Ezekiel chapter one. These pages are huge. Ezekiel chapter one, look at verse five. Now I'm trying to paint the picture of what we're going to see also that in this garden back in Genesis, what this serpent, this beast probably looked like. Verse five, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man and everyone had four faces and everyone had four wings. I believe that from heaven, this is how God created these beasts, these, these cherubs, and this is what Eve was talking to. Look at verse seven. And their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a what? Remember, they're called the beast. A beast have what kind of feet? Calf or calf's foot. Is, is there a correlation there? A beast and a calf's feet. Does that fit? All right, cool. And they sparkle like the color of bur uh, burnished brass. And they had the hands of a, of a man under their wings and their four sides. And, their, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. And they went every one, every one straight forward. Look at verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion and the right side and, the, and they four had the face of an what? Is an ox very similar to a beast? Would you call an ox a beast? I'm looking at the clues. And on the left side, they four also had the face of an angel. Turn really quick to Ezekiel chapter 10. He gives us some more uh, in his own words, what he said it looked like. These cherubs that God made. Now remember in the Bible, angels do not have wings in the Bible. Cherubs do. Cherubs have wings, angels don't. The Bible also says, beware, you could be entertaining an angel on earth that looked like a human being. Gabriel, when he talked to Mary, it was like a man. All the scriptures point to angels looking like men, but cherubs, they, are, have, they have more authority and they're the ones that have wings. Look at Ezekiel chapter 10, look at verse 14. And it reads, and everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub and the second face was the face of a man and the third, the face of a lion and the fourth, the face of an eagle. And the cherub, cherubims were lifted up this is the living creature that I saw by the river of Shabar, if I'm saying that right. 
So long story short, I believe Eve was talking to, the Bible's given the serpent, that's another name for the devil, and then beast. It was this cherub. He was still in his estate. He was in the, 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 the state that God created him. Look really quick, verse 2, back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 2. Now watch this. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. She understood. Verse 3, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, for God doth or doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, ye, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Eve and Adam knew their status that they had in that garden. Go really quick to Psalms chapter 8. Look at Psalms chapter 8. When you got it, say, Amen. I got Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8, if you look at verse 3 through 5, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Look at verse 5. For thou mayest, for thou hast made him a little lower than then what? Eve now, she knew that her and Adam were a little lower than the who? Angels. And what does the devil present to her back to Genesis chapter 3? He said, oh, when you, if you eat of that tree, God knows if you eat it, verse 5, your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as what? God's. <laughs> Look what he's throwing at her. You should be as gods. You can go from lower than the angels to gods. Knowing good and evil, verse six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, wisdom, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. That is the first time humanity rebelled against God. This serpent, this slickster, he got them to do it for the first time and from then sin has been passed on to everyone. Now look what he did here. Just to be clear, God's original instructions. Now, follow me with me. Follow me on this. Go to Genesis chapter 2. Look at verse 16 and 17. I don't know if you ever really pinpointed this, but let's do it today. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Do you have it? It says, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely what? But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Look at the word surely. Now go to Genesis chapter three. What did Eve say? She changed it up. She changed up the word of God. She changed up the commandment. Today, we see a lot of people changing the scriptures. The scripture tells us today, rightly divide. And some people are saying, I ain't rightly divide nothing. I'm going to mix it all together like spaghetti and meatballs. Watch this. Verse, uh, 
Genesis chapter 3, look at verse 3. Look what she said. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Now look at this next part. God never said this. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She adds, neither shall ye touch it. And then she takes away the word surely. God said, you shall surely die. Die. She changes it to, lest ye die. This five point steps the devil uses to trick us, to, to get us to rebel against God. Go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. That word Genesis means the beginning. This, is, this, this has always been his strategy. This has been his, his strategy from the beginning. 1 John chapter 2, look at verse 15. Now, through the word of God, we can have warning and we need to see this. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For or if any man love the world, the love of the father is not what? Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, the door was open. Sin came into the world. Now we have instruction saying, don't love it. Why? Look at verse 16. For all that is in the world, and this is all that the devil uses to get you to rebel against God. The lust of the flesh. The word lust means strong desire. There was a strong desire of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but it's of the world. This is the strategy. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Turn with me to Luke chapter four, my last scripture. Luke chapter four, and we'll open it up for questions. Luke chapter four, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Luke chapter four, Let's start at verse one. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, afterwards he hungered. So we're gonna see here the devil is going to tempt the Lord Jesus Christ on the earth. And let's look at that strategy that he used with Eve. And the devil said unto him, now, this is the devil's A game right here. This is his A game. He's going to give it his best of his best because he's tempting who? Son of God. He can't come weak. He can't. He's got to give it all he's got. Look what he does. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. We just read in verse one and two. He didn't eat for 40 days. Do you think he's hungry? Lust of the flesh. Your flesh gets hungry. Weight loss is tough, man. Because your flesh is saying, oh, the cookies, the cookies are over there. They, they brought them to work. They're free. <laughs> the cookies are delicious. The lust of the flesh, it's a strong desire. It could be food, it could be other things that the world are enslaved to. But the devil hits them right where I think it's the, the you haven't ate for 40 days. You got the power, turn that stone into some bread, man. You can do it. And Jesus answered saying, what did he say? What, what did Jesus say? It is what? what? What is Jesus referring to? The word. the word of God. Oh, I wish Eve would have had the word to refer to. She could have said, devil, no, not going to do it. 
in your life today. I thank God that you're here, that you keep coming because we are focusing on the what? The word of God. Our young folks, the word of God. This is the only thing that the devil will back up off of. Paul says the word is like a sword. It cuts, it penetrates. Jesus is our example. He responds not with a drop kick and an elbow to the face to the devil. He, he didn't do that. All he said is, it is what? It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The word of God is food for our souls. We eat the word. Who eats every day? Can we eat this every day? Is it possible? Verse five, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in, in a moment of time. Here's another temptation. The devil said, let me just show you what I, let me show you what I got. Pray for the celebrities, y'all. Pray for them. They're human beings. But they have a certain talent. And when they get to a certain level, they, they offer them all this. Who heard about what happened in Houston with the, the concert, the Travis Scott concert? Who heard about it? See, the devil has a lot of things he can offer. And he's going to do that with Jesus here. And the devil taking him up. Somebody say up. And to the high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Oh man, we, your, your record, you can sell all over the world. He's the prince of the air. I can control the airwaves. I, whatever, I can make it happen for you. Verse six, and the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Man, I can give you all this. Sign right here. <laughs> Verse seven. For thou therefore will, oh, if, if thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. These poor celebrities, they got to realize they have to worship the devil. You want it? You got to work. You got to take the oath. You got to do all those things. I know y'all heard about Illuminati and all those different things. It is real. That Travis Scott concert, I can use it. It's, it's out there. Look at the stage, the upside down cross. The, what he said, the, the, the invite, see you on the other side. There's, there's a witchcraft, a satanic thing going on, and thousands was running. I'll share it one day. There's been testimonies of people who were in that who got saved, and they go back and tell you what's really going on, the spells. Yes, it's a hit record, but there is subliminal messages. There is, there is a lot of things going on in there where people cannot control themselves if they're not saved. That's why today we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. But if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Three minutes. <clears throat> Eight. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Jesus refers to the word of God again. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. I wish Eve would have said that. I wish Adam would have said that. Get out of here, Satan. Look at the next strategy. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God. How are you going to tempt Jesus and, and, and say, if you be the son of God? Don't, don't, doesn't he know that Jesus knows that he's the son of God? Yeah, but it's always attacking our identity. Hmm? It's always attacking our identity. Yeah, yes. Yeah. How many times have he asked you, if you're really saved... If you're really a, a Christian, why did you say, <laughs> he'll go on and on. Cast thyself down from hence. He's trying to get Jesus to commit suicide. 
Cast thyself down from hence. He's trying to get him to jump off a pinnacle of a very high place. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. He took a scripture. He took the word of God and twisted it. Verse 11. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy feet against a stone. He said, well, the word says, these angels, they're supposed to protect you. Anything, it, it, nothing should happen to you. Even if you fall off a cliff, do it. What does Jesus say? Verse 12. And Jesus answers, answering said unto him, it is said, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. That's another scripture that Jesus gave him. That was Deuteronomy chapter six, verse, chapter six, verse 16. Verse 13, and when the devil had ended all the what? <laughs> he departed from him for a season. Jesus gave him the word, gave him the word, gave him the word. So why do I bring this up today? If you are tempted by the devil in our dispensation of grace, what do we give the devil? What do we respond with? The word. Questions, comments. Questions, comments, answers. Questions, comments, concerns. Go ahead. So my oldest Daisy, she left to go on a plane to go visit her best friend out in Nevada. And all week long she kept asking, she's like, Mom, um, can the devil put questions or, or thoughts in my, in my head? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, she didn't give me the full story, you know? And then the next day, Mom, like, what should I do? You know, she's like, I just, every time I think about getting on the plane, I think I'm going to die. And she's got great, she really has anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so we had a, I had a chance to sit down with her and tell her, I was like, well, so how are you going against those thoughts? And she was like, well, she's like, I don't know. She's like, if I'm not doing something and I'm not busy or preoccupied, those thoughts just flood over me and I can't do anything. And, and then I think I'm going to die. So that's what I exactly taught, you know, taught her back to the word. I was like, well, when Jesus was tempted, mm -hmm. you know, and whatnot, what did he do? And as soon as I said, you go look up other scripture about fear mm -hmm. and you quote him back the mm -hmm. word of God. There you go. And as soon as she did that, she was like, mom, that worked. She was like, mm -hmm. I, I'm not afraid anymore. And Amen. she got that plane and whatnot. So it was Amen. so oh, man. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It is so living and active. Yeah. And, you know, it's like so mm -hmm. important. Like, if we don't know that word, mm -hmm. we're not going to know how to defeat him and his subtle tactics. Amen. And so, the first word of 2 Timothy 2.15 is what? what uh, the first word of that scripture. What's the first word? Study. study. If we don't study, like you're saying, we won't know what to throw back at him. Another, I saw a hand. I thought I saw. Did I see another hand or was somebody yarning? Okay, go ahead, brother. We've been, we've been talking about this for weeks, just knowing and believing too. It's like believing in the word because I'll go to the church on, on this one, and it's, there's a lot of churches, and I'm not going to mention a lot, but they're just falling into the temptation of taking, knowing the word, mm -hmm. and not understanding the context of the word, health and wealth being a good example of some of these churches. Mm -hmm. Reaping and sowing and all this other stuff. Right. If you don't truly understand and believe what is behind it, yeah. you can almost take the word kind of like the, you know, the, the devil. Yeah, the devil can mm -hmm. twist it. Amen. Even in a, Amen. So take something good and trick you with it. Exactly. Yeah. I have a question. So, mm -hmm. was Eve filled with the Spirit? Why could she not recognize and know what was, the, what was happening? I mean, obviously, it was God's plan for that, but was she? Mm -hmm. Good question. Anybody want to tackle that? Anybody? I don't have a good answer for you, but I, I listen to like uh, John Jerry Starr's poll, and that's one of the biggest questions that they had. Mm -hmm. Like, if there was no sin in them, what made them? They were perfect. And so I would say that uh, there's only one being that is not changing, and that's God. And even if you have a level of perfection, you're still changing, right? And so if you are mutable and changeable, then there is a chance that you can fall into sin. Mm -hmm. But that that is, that is was their greatest question that they had mm -hmm. in the Bible, right there. Mm -hmm. If there was no sin, what would him? So when we say free will, 
I know that's tossed around like, oh, free will. This was a true sense of the word free will. God truly gave them free will. They knew the commandment. They knew. Think about how intelligent do you have to be to have a conversation and interaction with God? She was made directly by the hands of God. They knew they had one commandment. What was the one commandment? What was it? They were in paradise. But that serpent, which I believe I exposed him today, he came and he presented. He presented. She thought about it. She entertained it. She debated. She changed the word of God. She added to. She took away from the word of God. And he said, she said he beguiled her. He, he deceived her. And we're saying that the only way we really do have free will is if you have the opposite of good, which is evil. So mm -hmm. none of us would really do you have free will if all you have to choose from is mm -hmm. positive things, good things. You don't have free will yeah. you're, you're robot. To from. Robot. Mm -hmm. Like a robot, that's right? Really interesting. Mm -hmm. That was kind of an aha moment for me. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a great point. That's a great point. You, God didn't want robots. If you wanted robots, he would just program you and you would just. <laughs> but the free will, real, the free will is real. Did you have your hand? You think about advancement. He said, "You can be, you will, your eyes will be open. You'll know good and evil, and you'll be as gods." I think that was huge for her. And she said, it, "The fruit looked good. It looks good." And so the 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 devil using all those things, and it was her first time. She they were really innocent, really innocent, and so. I don't know. Great, great discussion. Go ahead. Huh? His that Never changed. Yeah. Because that's exactly what these celebrities and stuff like that are trying, yeah. to, trying to be like God. They want to be worshipped. They want to be yeah. idolized. Yeah. They're an idol. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what he's doing. Like, it doesn't change. Yeah. The three G's for guys. The three what? The three G's. Say it. There you go. <laughs> and he uses it. Yeah, recycle. Yeah. But we learned today that Jesus responded with the what? Say it again. The word. And you're here today to learn what? The word. Praise the Lord. Let's end in prayer. Oh, it's almost 1117. We'll take a two minute break now. Two minute break. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time in your word. Lord, thank you for the example that you set for us when we are tempted by the devil. And we pray that we continue to study to show thyself approved to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we can be in the word and we can be involved with what you are doing today. That's where the power is. We just thank you for this time. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.